very much for the introduction. I hope you can see my slides well. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, uh, Patricia Contreras, um, Alexander Kubicki, Adam Brandeburger, and Pierre Francisco Lamura. Uh, the first two are uh, from universities in Madrid, and uh, Adam is from NYU, and Pierre Francesco is from uh, Leipzig. Uh, you find our work on archive. And um, uh, let me also use the moment for uh, uh, thanking the, the, speaker, uh, the, the speakers, the organizers, and um, uh, for this very nice opportunity to speak. So what we do in this um, talk is um, try to add a little two cents to the um, good old question, is the world quantum? Right, there is a very, prolific line of research um, trying to characterize in, um, trying to characterize quantum theory in terms of physical principle, axioms, constraints. And there is also another parallel line which try to make up better theories um, about the world, right? Better theories that are nicer than quantum because for example, they are, um, more computationally um, sound and easy to approach and um, uh, or they're just better, nicer, more intuitive descriptions. And um, this uh, line of research also includes testing and being critical about your own uh, results, right? And for example, here, the same authors uh, with a notable exception, um, uh, like trying to um, see the, um, what problems uh, like this new theory could generate, right? So our contribution to these uh, two lines of research is uh, to develop new physical principles uh, uh, that notably are not inspired by physics or by how um, things should physically behave or um, information theory as many principles are, uh, these are inspired by epistemics, which is the uh, science of knowledge and uh, the formal description of knowledge um, and, uh, and its consequences. Uh, and then inspired by a seminal theorem, which is um, Aumann's agreement theorem, which we will see in a bit. And then what we also do is that we check that quantum mechanics obeys those principles. So, so basically uh, quantum mechanics um, behaves well, so, uh, same as classical mechanics, and we identify which post-quantum correlations um, uh, that, that are no signaling um, violate these principles. So we provide a testing ground for new theories, um, which is like um, very easy to, 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 to check or implement once you know what your theory allows or not. And, and if simply does your theory allow one of these no signaling correlations, then mm, there's a red flag because it doesn't respect uh, the agreement theorem by Aumann. So what is, what is the agreement theorem about? Um, well, um, informally we could describe it as follows, like two agents who share a common prior cannot agree to disagree. And this is like, uh, because Aumann's theorem was meant to be about people's behavior, uh, and it's a theorem um, uh, which is fundamental in classical probability and statistics. And um, there is a formal, clearly a formal um, discussion in the original paper. We have modified it a bit to fit our purposes, and we will present it now. Um, and especially we will ask, can we extend this theorem uh, to quantum mechanics and beyond, and how to do that. So what does it mean that two agents who share a common prior cannot agree to disagree? Well, let's make it slightly more precise, slightly only, and uh, say that the common prior information is a probability space um, about you know, a description of the world that both uh, Alice and Bob share. So they both know this description of the world. There, there are states of the world, omega one, omega two, uh, up to omega n, there are five in this case, and um, uh, probabilities uh, attached to it, right? The probability space. 
this corresponds to what we normally describe as a local model, right? So there is a hidden variable model uh, that describes some correlation that Alice and Bob can generate. Uh, and and what, what does it mean to agree to disagree? Well, each agent um, can view, uh, can measure, observe this world um, with their own perspective. For example, here, Alice can make an observation, a measurement X and obtain an outcome A, and Bob can make a measurement Y and uh, obtain an outcome B. And both these measurements are described classically uh, in, um, in depending on the true state of the world omega. So what happens is that people, uh, both agents, Alice and Bob, know that there is a description of, a, of, of the world. There is a true state of the world that verifies and realizes with like a um, uh, certain probability, but they don't just know everything. Alice knows something about it, and Bob knows something about it. They're not, they need not be equal. So how do we model this? Well, by partitions. Uh, Alice and Bob, by their own measurements, divide the state of the world into different partitions. The blue partition for Alice and the red partition for Bob. And what they know after a measurement is in which partition element they're in. So in which partition element the true state of the world lies, okay? And um, uh, so this is Alman's original setting, and this is a setting that we report um, uh, to quantum mechanics. Um, so, okay, so they have, uh, they have different views of the world, and these worlds can be different, so they can disagree. Uh, they have a common prior, they can disagree, and what does it mean that they agree to disagree? Well, uh, suppose there is another event of interest. Uh, uh, they are um, uh, interested in uh, estimating the probability of. So clearly Alice has a, has a um, uh, view of the world and Bob has another view of the world after their measurements. So they can estimate the probability of this event of interest by um, working out conditional probability based on their known partition element. So, so Alice will say, okay, I know that I am in this partition element, so condition on what I know, the probability of this other event is uh, QA. And Bob says, well, I know that I'm in this partition element, so I calculate my own uh, conditional probability, and this might differ. And if the so if the estimates uh, are common certainty, we say that the they they agree. Uh, what does it mean that a common certainty is the is a definition in epistemics? But this means that uh, Alice knows that uh, Bob's um, estimate must be that, and she also knows that Bob knows that her estimate must be the one that she calculated and so on the, with a hierarchy of, um, of uh, certainties. Like she knows that Bob knows that she knows that her, estimate is, uh, that her estimate is that, and she knows that Bob knows that she knows that Bob knows so at, at infinite, okay? And this is very common in game theory or in this uh, theories of knowledge that this like infinite hierarchies that at some point converge and, and, and people are happy. Yes, yes, I, I, I know what the situation is. So Alman's theorem says that if, the estimates about the probability of an event of interest, the yellow one, a common certainty, then they must be equal. So people cannot agree to disagree, cannot reach two different conclusions about the, uh, an estimate of a probability of an event and be okay with it and, and, and be um, happy that the conclusions are correct and, uh, and both valid. And this is kind of a consistency check of conditional probability in classical physics. So, okay, let's, what, does it make, what does it mean to make this setting non-classical now? Unfortunately, Bell's theorem tells us that there is no local model that corresponds to hidden variables. So uh, we cannot use this model that Alman used. So this picture is out of, of, um, uh, of, of the game. And so what, what we do normally in, um, uh, uh, to frame the, the non-classical setting is we just talk about the probability distribution 
that Alice and Bob can observe without concentrating on what's uh, the ontology be, uh, below. So uh, we just work on probabilities P, A, B, given X, X, Y. And you know, these are not necessarily local, so they don't have a hidden variable model necessarily. And um, they are non-signaling um, because this is a principle that we, we like to obey. Uh, so once we have um, a non-signaling box, how do we define uh, the events of common interest and how do we define what is to disagree and agree to disagree? Okay, so uh, most of the work we have done in the paper is basically a mapping from uh, local hidden variables to boxes and back again that, that allows us to export Alman's theorem to you no know, signaling and to work out and, and reprove the theorem in that setting. So how, how do we do? We, we basically uh, this, I think this is a standard way of, of, of doing it. Um, uh, and uh, we associate sets um, uh, for a measurement X with outcome A to the partition elements. And we say that the initial observation that uh, Alice and Bob do are um, like corresponding to input zero of the NS box. And the outcomes are um, zero, one, depending on the partition element. And then, and this is crucial, uh, the event of interest corresponds to the input one of the NS box and outcome one. And there is not one event of interest. There are two perfectly correlated events of interest. Okay. And, and now classically, this is equivalent. In, in non-classical settings, this is a crucial difference that allows us to work um, uh, with, uh, with this uh, framework. So Alice and Bob are not trying to estimate the probability of the same event, but the probability of two perfectly correlated events. Okay. Um, good. So, uh, and now, I mean, how do we estimate the probabilities? Well, probability of AP given XY is the probability of the intersection of these two sets. Uh, so the intersection would be uh, some states of the world and you sum up uh, with, the, with, with the probabilities of the states of the world. So the normalization is fine because we are speaking about partitions. So um, uh, the union over X of um, uh, all the partition elements is the whole space, the same for, for Bob over Y. Um, and uh, this implies no signaling for free. So, so clearly, if we, we deal with classical probabilities, uh, we have no signaling, but this works for all no signaling boxes. If local hidden variables can take negative probabilities, uh, this has something to do with ontological models. Uh, I mean, while the probabilities are, are hard to interpret, um, it's um, it doesn't have the ontological model doesn't have to have a, a physical meaning, right? It's just a way to um, to describe what's going on. Um, however, I mean, I don't want to go into the, these details. Uh, what we do in our paper is we just work with the probabilistic setting, knowing that there is a way to go back and forth. So how to get an operational interpretation uh, of, of this Alman theorem um, with, an, with an NS box? And, and what does it tell us? So I want to warn you that our um, the results go beyond the op this operational interpretation. This is only one way of visualizing our results. Um, our results are more, more, more existential, like which the signaling box leads to a contradiction and which don't. But it's nice in a short talk to see it uh, this way. Okay. So um, let's see. Uh, okay. We said that. What we do at the beginning, so first of all, the, the shared common knowledge, common prior, is the description of the NS box. Okay, so Alice and Bob know that they are dealing with a non signaling box, which is described by a table, right? To probability AB given XY. Um, and now, uh, their first observation, their first partial view of the world, is the measure with input XY, 0, 0. And they obtain AB which without loss of generality, we assume they are zero, zero. So we assume that at the beginning of this experiment, they have obtained uh, this, um, uh, this result, right? And then this is the starting of our experiment. They don't talk to each other about the results. 
Okay, so so for for Alice's perspective, Bob hasn't done anything yet. So uh, uh, they, uh, it's legitimate for Alice to try and estimate Bob's events of interest. So the, remember, there were two events, uh, uh, two perfectly correlated events, and um, uh, she can try to find what happened, what could have happened, what's the probability that Bob uh, obtains one on input one, given that she has obtained zero on input zero. Uh, so this is perfectly doable um, uh, to try and calculate what would happen here, um, or better in this row. So um, uh, they also have all the information in the, in the box, so, so they can do this calculation. So Alice calculates the probability of B equals one, given that she had obtained zero on input zero and that Bob had put one, and she calls it QA. Bob does something similar for Alice's size. Uh, she calculates the probability that Alice got one, given um, uh, that he obtained zero on input zero, uh, and Alice had done input one, and, she, and he calls it QB. And now they announce QA and QB. Okay, so, so this is the moment where they say, my estimate is uh, for the event of interest is QA, my estimate for the event of interest is QB. And now it, uh, so, so, so this was like the, the uh, common knowledge and um, uh, disagreement part, uh, um, like uh, if you want to, to map it to what we said before, and now we are need to speak about the common certainty. So, so possibly these estimates are different. In general, they don't need to be equal. So now can I, can, oh, sorry, can Alice and Bob be, certain about QA and QB and be okay with them. What they do for the, uh, the, 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 um, the um, agree to disagree part is they calculate a sequence of sets of input output pairs in order to reach common certainty. So let's see how they do. So first, Alice asks herself, okay, given that Bob out, um, announced outcome QB, like uh, announced the estimate QB, what output um, um, of input zero, right, uh, he got that led him to make this estimate. And she puts the outputs of Bob in a set called B0. And Bob does the same for Alice. She, uh, he asks, what output did Alice get, given that she announced QA, and he creates the set A0. Right, uh, this is how they calculate them in probability terms. Um, uh, so these sets are sets of quadruples because then we need to join them. But uh, the only, so uh, for example, here, the only limitations uh, are on the B uh, and A, X, Y are, are all the, 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 the quadruples. And okay, then they go on and they say, okay, so given that Bob actually could have had an outcome uh, that made him announce um, QB, Alice asks, can I be certain that Bob obtained something in B0 or is he cheating me? Uh, so she calculates the set A1, then now is her output such that the probability that Bob outputted something in B0 is one. So yes, okay, I'm certain that given my output, yes, Bob, Bob has got one of these. Um, and Bob does the same, he calculates his outputs so that uh, A0 is certain. And then they start with this hierarchy, right? So uh, they calculate the sets AN and BN, which are the sets of, um, uh, for example, AN is a set of Alice's output, outputs such that uh, BN minus one, those are the, the, the previous um, um, layer, is certain. So yes, I'm still okay that this thing can happen. And at some point this process will converge. Okay, so either we then will end up with some empty sets or there will be something in the set. And uh, if there is something in the set, then they are okay with the result. The result is possible. So uh, we define common certainty of disagreement as this. Common certainty of disagreement uh, happens at, uh, at a certain point, uh, zero, 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 without loss of generality, right? Input, output, zero. If and only if, for all n, this input is, this input output pair is in all the sets, a, n, b, n. So actually, 
yes, these outcomes, these estimates could have, could have happened. And these estimates are different. Okay, so if these two things happen, there is common certainty of disagreement. If, if, um, if one of these things don't happen, there is either no common certainty or no disagreement. And Alman, uh, by mapping this to Alman's theorem or by reproving it directly, we, we show that this is impossible locally. Okay, so because of the way our theorem was proven, which is just manipulation of probabilities, uh, uh, we, have, we are able to reprove that if you reach a common certainty of something in the, um, in the classical setting, then there is no disagreement. Or if there is disagreement, you don't reach common certainty. Okay, so, so this is a restatement of the classical theorem. But now we are only working on NS boxes. So in principle, we can extend this. Uh, and try and prove it for quantum that wasn't possible before. And so can it arise in quantum or non-signaling settings? Well, in non-signaling settings, uh, somehow, somewhat unsurprisingly, yes, it can arise. So Alman's theorem is not valid for general non-signaling um, boxes. And we actually have a full characterization of all of them. So all of the boxes which have this form, these parameters, we start with R, S, U, T here, and then we fill, fill in the others. Um, and for which R is greater than zero because the initial event zero, zero, um, a given zero, zero must have happened. Um, and S minus U is different from R minus T. Um, this, this is otherwise local or no disagreement. So all the boxes which respects these conditions with any value of these parameters uh, give rise to common certainty of disagreement. Um, and the proof is as follows. So the zeros here come from perfect correlations and from the definitions of sets A and B N. Okay, so these four zeros are, are by definition uh, or by assumption, right? Uh, uh, this is really that the two events are perfectly correlated and this you can see by, by, by the sets I'll show you, show you in a second. And then the rest is just standard no signaling and normalization. So how do we get this zero zero here? Assume that this first event is in the sets A and B N and apply the definition. Uh, so first, I mean, there are four cases, but, but we just see one. Uh, assume that zero is in A zero and zero is also in B zero, like B U equals zero and A equals zero. Then immediately, because zero 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 is in the first level of this, sets hierarchy, um, uh, we obtain that this probability is one, probability of A zero given uh, everything as zero, implying that this probability must be zero. Okay, and the same for Bob, uh, the same from the other side, you, you, can, you can prove this zero. And then the rest is really straightforward. And the, the disagreement condition, when you work out what it means in, the, in this set theoretic uh, uh, framework, uh, it really implies that uh, these two uh, must be different, and therefore S minus U is from R, R minus T. So, um, and, and reverse implication is quite easy because if you take one of these boxes, you can manually verify that um, uh, it features common certainty of disagreement in the previous um, operational interpretation I've shown. Um, and now, the interesting thing can it arise in quantum settings? And the theorem is no, these boxes cannot be quantum. And um, uh, there is a direct proof uh, which uses the mapping that Searson has between um, uh, like um, uh, correlations and um, inner product of uh, unit vectors is the classic theorem by Searson. If you apply this mapping uh, in, in uh, 10 lines, you obtain a contradiction. Therefore, this cannot be. Um, implemented. There is also another way that we'll see later to prove the same result. Um, okay, good. And now the last, um, uh, so uh, this could be made fully general uh, because um, uh, we prove it for the two by two case. However, um, any uh, size of quantum correlation, any dimension, um, that has disagreement must have it as a, at, at a point and you can re-label uh, the input outputs to have a two by two 
uh, uh, correlation in, uh, in the end. So um, if two by two cannot be quantum, nor can larger one, this fully generalizes. Good, so now that we have, we have defined this, and this is a new physical principle based on Arman's theorem, um, uh, can we have other kinds of, of these agreements? Uh, yeah, I will quickly show you uh, that we have defined another uh, physical principle, which is much easier than the one I showed you. Um, uh, and it's called singular disagreement, where we only require that QA is one and QB is zero. So here, Alice has an estimate um, uh, that the, the event of interest is certain, and Bob is as the opposite estimate. The, the, event of, the event of interest does not happen with certainty. This is impossible locally because it reduces to Hardip's paradox, and uh, it can arise in no signal settings, very similar to, to before. We obtain um, uh, um, parameters for boxes. And um, uh, it cannot arise in quantum settings. And this is based on this paper by Ashutosh Rai et, et al. called Quantum Voids, which says that every non singular box with four zeros in certain positions um, cannot be implemented uh, by quantum. It's either local or super quantum or post quantum. And uh, uh, yeah, this is a very interesting paper. I, I really invite you to read. And um, so this is also a way to reprove the original result, but we have a more direct proof it's here, so that cannot be applied in this setting. Uh, okay, uh, so putting two and two together, uh, we have that this, um, this thing um, is a parameterized NS box that satisfies, um, uh, sorry, that violates both uh, principles. And ta-da, the PR box, uh, Fits here. So, I mean, a reshifting of the PR box fits in this parameter. So, the PR box is kind of an extremal example violating both of our principles. Uh, so, so, what's next is uh, well, um, um, can we argue better that this is a real physical principle, indeed, that physical theories of nature um, um, like. Uh, uh, follow. Um, for this, we need approximate notions. There are some numerical evidence that our uh, results are, are robust, but we don't have a proof. Um, and then there are, there are applications to distributed computations, and, uh, but the, the, the main thing that I really would like to see are further connection between epistemics and quantum information, because I think epistemics is a very um, fertile field in this sense. Okay. Thank you for uh, listening. And uh, if you have any other questions, you can ask now or uh, write my email. Unfortunately, I cannot be on Gardestown because I have a very busy day. Thank you very much. Thanks for the lovely talk. Other questions? We have about two minutes, so yeah.